Haven't waited in years. Oh, I always I, said, why get out of a good boat? Because we got to sneak up on these fish. Hey, Blair, throw your bait buster right over there around those mullet, on the edge of those mullet. That school goes all the way down right here. It's like a bank of mullet. Those trout and snook like to hang right on the edge of them, waiting for one of them mullet to mess up. Boil. On your bait? Around it. Mullet everywhere, which is a good thing. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of times we're in, walking the grass flats right now, and what happens is, is the mullet get down in these grass flats, and they start rooting around, and it spooks up the shrimp, and it spooks up the crab. A mullet's a vegetarian, so you know they're not, the, the, the shrimp and the crab doesn't know that the mullet's not there to eat them, so they got to spook away from these big mullet rooting around. The mullet are in there eating all this rotten seaweed, so that's why they're here. Always look for big schools of black mullet. Very good, uh, very good target spots for all the predator fish we like to catch. There he is. You come up and sift it right off the top. It's a trout. Well, that's a good way to start off the morning. Yeah, it is. Nice trout, too. Nice trout. Look, getting a little airborne there. I had one bust mine as soon as you got hooked up, too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he come up and slurped it right off the top. Beautiful trout. Well, welcome to this episode of Addicted Fishing. <laughs> he wants She's to get back out you. there with all them mullet. We're doing something we don't do often right now. We're wading oh, on the flats down here in Jensen Beach. We got Captain Greg Snyder with us. And today we're targeting inshore species right here. Trout, snook, tarpon, about anything we can do. Yeah, buddy. Y'all stay tuned to this episode of Addicted Fishing from Stewart, Florida, Jensen Beach. Captain Greg Snyder, we'll be right back. Let's go then. There's a fish right there. Nice trout. Beautiful trout. Well, I'm gonna try the shrimp here. Uh, Blair's throwing the bait buster. He's caught a couple fish on it. And uh, I had a bunch of fish following my bait buster, but they just weren't eating it. So I'm gonna try to slow it down and throw the shrimp out there and uh, see if that works. Something just boiled right here. There's a lot of mullet out here, Blair. Have you noticed I've that? Seen, <laughs> I've seen one or two. <laughs> but that's good, you know, you. You get out here and you find a beautiful flat like this with a lot of potholes and there's no mullet or stingrays or any bait around. There's a fish there you right go. there. Nice trout. Real nice trout. Yeah, that's a nice one, Blair. Beautiful trout. The only bad thing about trout this size, ooh, is that they almost jump right into the cameraman. No. <laughs> is that the fight just didn't long enough. Come over here and check this dude out. That fish right there is one of the prettiest ones that swim here in the Indian River. Got all that purple in its tail. Oh, there we go. Nice green. Oh, Greg got him a nice one on over there. It looks like they just turned on. I'm going to let this guy go. First cast with the shrimp. How many of them you got in your pocket? I got three or four. <laughs> Are you ready for the switch? I'm about ready for the switch. I mean, I, I've cast it over there a hundred times with that other thing. I just don't think they're... Well, I know the bait buster would bring the bigger ones out, but... Whoa, good morning. Well, that's the way to do it, a double. A double. <laughs> Oh, there she is. She's pretty. Look at that. Yeah. About the same size one I had. Yep. They're beautiful, aren't they? Beautiful fish. Like that DOA shrimp, buddy. Look, she ate it all the way down. Oh, you went and changed the shrimp, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you want one? 
Well, you just caught one on the bait buster, so. No, nah, I'll stick with the bait buster. You stick to your gray DOA shirt, and I'll stick to my blue DOA <laughs> shirt. <laughs> nice fish, huh? <laughs> Beautiful fish. Let her go. There she goes, right there in the grass. Look, there she goes. The reason why we're out here wading right now, you got a lot of anundulations out here on this flat. And what I mean by that, it's got high spots, low spots, high spots, low spots. If we were trying to come over here in the ranger, it would, it would hit bottom, we'd make a lot of noise. And it's just so much quieter when you can get out and wade to the fish. Plus, it, it makes you not be on the Minn Kota so much, going across the flats, burning it up. You actually work the flat a whole lot better, and you almost, you almost cover every square foot of the flat when you, when you do it right. So that's why we're waiting. So let's see what we can get here again. Ooh, that was Yeah, big. that's a bust right there. That's a big weight coming. Was that on your bait buster? No. I'm, oh. oh. Oh, we whacked one. Holy whacker. What you got over there, Greg? It ain't coming up. I think he's snagging It's a up. nice something. What'd you get? I'm hoping it's a big trout. I'm hoping. And it is. I'm Look at that. It's a Woo. Oh, nice easy, trout. girl. Easy. Nice trout? Yeah. Like you need help with that one? No, not that much help. Not that nice. Don't need the gaff That's or anything. Good. Oh, oh, Dang, oh. that ain't a bad fish. Oh, easy. You're back easy here girl. Rolling. Yeah, that ain't too bad of a fish. No, look at her, boy. Isn't that beautiful? Let me right over here. Oh. There you, hang on. There you go. Up. Look at that. Yes, sir, that's a pretty one. I think you got the, the biggest trout of the morning right there. That's a good one there. Maybe I should have went to that shrimp. I don't know. It's a nice trout. It's a female there. Little gold shrimp. Ow! <laughs> they got some teeth. Oh, God, they got some teeth. <laughs> that one just penetrated my thumb. <laughs> I didn't like to take them out of the water. But man, what a pretty fish. Yep. Look at that. Little toothy critter. Yep, that's a good one. That is an awesome one, bro. Here, you can let it go. All right. And like I say, the reason we're out here wading is just it makes it nice and calm. We'll be right back, right in the ranger, catching I don't know what. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Let's go then! Oh, oh. and he's down! Roll, 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 roll! I feel pretty good. Finally. Big Mama's gotta be around here somewhere. Well, welcome back. We got a, a change of our situation here. We were wading earlier this morning. Now we're fishing in the deeper part. We got the tide going out. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to show you something along here. Something with a little line down the side of it. Kind of said I didn't want to target them too much this year, but we're here, we're in Stewart. And if we can show you one, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing with Project Snook this year. Blair, see this tree that's hanging out right here? Mm -hmm. There's a little bar right there right over it, and the tide's rolling over it, they'll snook like a lay on the other side of it. And, and wait for a big fat plastic and, shrimp to yep, swim in their mouth? and ambush a, <laughs> ambush a big fat DOA shrimp mm -hmm. swimming by there, so. Just working it, the tide's still going out, we're just throwing it up and letting the tide just kind of drift it through. Just like, a, uh, make it look like a natural shrimp. A natural being shrimp. out by the tide. Yep, the only time a shrimp really flips its tail or, or jerks is when it's getting chased by something. So naturally, they just kind of go with the tide. And that's what you want it to do. You want it to look as natural as possible. I always say in my seminars, you know, you can hear your hand go through the water when you're swimming and like in a, sure. in a pool. Yep. And all you're trying to do is get that shrimp. That's why you see it's popping it. And what it does, it makes a little noise underneath the water. And when it pops, it, it creates a sound of a spooking shrimp. And that's what the snook are keying in on. I know spots in Louisiana. There he is. Nice little fish, buddy. <laughs> all right. Oh. All right, I get to talk about Project Snook. Right Hold there. on, I want to talk about Project Snook. You, All right. you can catch him. Oh, okay, he's caught. Yes, sir, that, that is a good thing to see. Florida has just, easy, buddy. 
Florida has just had the coldest winter almost in history and the snook population all across Florida just just took a beating and um, we've actually teamed up addictive fishing has teamed up with our sponsors and we're going to be helping out the snook foundation helping raise these guys right here remember when you always hold a snook hold his belly like this and especially take care of these guys this year I'm not even, I'm gonna let this guy go and I'm gonna tell you what we're doing here come on suck my thumb baby and off he goes what I want to tell you about is what my producer came up with. It's a, it's a program called Project Snook, and it's going to help Moat Marine raise more snook. And how, how we're doing it, all of our sponsors are kicking in a little bit, and we have uh, Starbright cleaning products. If you like to keep a clean boat, go buy you some, it's sea soft soap, it's soap to wash your boat. And they donated a thousand bottles to us. We're going to sell them $10 a bottle, and every bit of the money is going to Project Snook and it's gonna help out Moat Marine learn how to raise these snook. They've mastered sturgeon, they've mastered trout, they've mastered a lot of fish. Snook's been the hardest fish, basically, that they can, that they can raise in captivity. So do yourself a favor, keep a clean boat, go buy you some Starbright products and uh, help a snook out. I'm gonna catch one. Blair, that sounds like it's gonna be a great program. Get a lot more snook in here and because of the bad winter we had and lost so many snook, it sounds like it's gonna be uh, yeah, I a good I, deal. I think it's gonna be great. Kill and, uh, yeah. Another thing, we wanna show you a little bit of footage. We were down to Moat Marine the other day and uh, this is just basically what they do down there. So I hope you enjoy this. We're gonna retie and uh, hopefully show you another one. So right. hope you enjoy this footage right from Moat Marine. Pretty killer place. This is Moat Marine's aquaculture park right here and this is where Project Snook is going on. Y'all come in and check this out. This is where all the magic happens with these snook. Let's go check out these mogans in here. Each of these uh, tanks have either about 15 to 28 fish, depending on the ratios that we have of males to females. I'm Carol Neidig, staff scientist. I work for Moat Marine Laboratory. We're trying to replicate social behavior that would be seen in the wild to encourage them to spawn. Ooh, that's the sound I like. I'm Matthew Resley, I'm a senior biologist here at Modoc Culture Park. I'm in charge of all the adult fish. I'm in charge of getting them to, to spawn so that we can have the, the little guys that we're releasing into the wild. After the snook and spawn, this is where they bring the larvae and they raise them from little larvae up to fingerling size right before the release. It's kind of like a nursery. I'm Nate Brennan and I'm in the Center for Fisheries Enhancement. At this point in time, I'm working on rearing the snook as larvae to raise them up to stages where we would actually be able to release them. This stage, they're kind of oceanic still. So. Yeah. So they're day 11 here. Project Snook is important to us because we're trying to understand how to better raise these fish and to get them out into the wild. So every dollar, even if it's one dollar, helps us to be able to make this happen. Is that awesome or what? And this is just the beginning of Project Snook. Anything you guys can do to help, it will greatly be appreciated, especially by these snook. Now back to the water. Oh, oh. and he's down! Roll, 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 roll! <laughs> what were you saying? You gotta watch out for them waves? <laughs> Did my phone make it back in the boat? On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm going to show you what Greg and I were throwing out there today to catch these trout and these snook. Aren't you glad those snook showed up? I sure am. I was throwing the DOA bait buster, and all this little bait right here does, it looks so much like a mullet, and that's all you want to do is imitate a mullet. Had it rigged with 40 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon leader, had it rigged with a Unity Uni knot right onto my 30 pound test Fins wind tamer. And when the wind was blowing like it was on us out there today, you're gonna be thankful you're throwing a wind tamer because it'll reduce your wind knots. And when you wind the line back up on the spool, it doesn't get all matted up and just, it, it winds back up on the spool like it's supposed to in the wind. And you're not gonna get the wind knots when you cast out. Seven foot nine, Wright McGill signature series rod and a 4,000 size reel. Perfect scenario right here to get out and wade the flats, pitch the docks and uh, get the job done. Greg, a little bit later, he switched to the DOA shrimp, which I didn't see, and you saw him basically 
catching trout after trout after trout as I was trying for the snook. And later on, he went to the red and white. Now, anybody that knows anything about snook fishing, red and white does its job. And y'all are gonna see this here in just a little bit. There's your bait check for today. Hope y'all can get down to Stewart and catch you some snooks, some trout, and whatever else might be biting down there when you go fishing with Greg. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. Damn. We're never gonna make it back to the boat. Why, why would we want to? <laughs> with the tide coming in and everything, you see how shallow it is where we're standing, but right here, it drops off into a little bowl. If you can see on the other side of it, where the water starts getting nervous again, it's coming back up. It's getting shallow again. I, I bet those fish might be laying right up in here in this bowl. Whack one on that red and white. Sometimes they like it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> nice! Oh, yes, sir, baby! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right now, baby. That shall work there, brother. Red and white bait buster. Easier, oh, yeah. Easy. Oh, he's going to give you a little drag scream there. Yeah, just going to pull a little bit. Little rod bending. Only drag got, screaming television. Only got 30 on here, so. Woo! Hello. Light him up, baby. You ever have to run and chase after him? Yeah, you hook a 30 pound snook out here on the flats, you better run after him on this tackle right here. No, he will take... no, no shuffling the feet on this flat when you got a 30 pound. No, you just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've blown a few snook oh, out. Oh, look at that fish. Nice. Let me get this guy in real quick. Yeah. Amazing, after all that, still got enough spunk to. Nice. Hello. Come here, baby. I'm going to shoot through my legs. And that ain't good when you got a hook coming up like that. Yeah. Oop, 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 oop. Oh, oh, there she is. There she is. Got her? Oh. Oh, that's that leader. Leader's real afraid. Is it? You got her, Blair? Yeah. Come here, dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a caught snook. Success. That is a caught snook there. Nice fish. God, these things are nice and healthy. Oh, hooked myself. Look at this fish, guys. Give you a little idea how big that snook is against the, my rod right there. Well, that'll make you smile right That's there. That's a fat daddy, baby. Nice fish. It's been a while since I, I've been able to say they got a Labrador look on their head, but. They sure do, don't they? Yeah, they do. God, it's a pretty fish. Well. We'll send this one off when she's ready. Let her suck on my thumb. There she goes. Going down to the depths, baby. <laughs> right. I think we're about out of time on this blustery day. We were going to go offshore and try to show you some fish from offshore, but in a 22 foot Ranger, I don't recommend going out in 15, 20 mile an hour winds when it's crashing over the, over the boat. Don't forget about the website at dicktofishing.com and if y'all ever want to do this, you can look his website up and that is what? Stewart Inshore Fishing. Stewart Inshore Fishing.com. So if y'all ever get the chance to do it, come down here, you can book Greg, you can catch trout, snook, tarpon. There's a, there is a plethora of species down here to come and catch. And I hope y'all enjoyed the segment that we did on the Project Snook. Kevin McCabe, my producer, has come up with an awesome plan of that. So if you can get a chance to buy you some uh, Star Bright soap, $10 from each bottle is going right to Moat Marine and is gonna help the snook become popular again here in Florida. They're still popular, there's just not quite as many, but with the help of uh, Moat Marine, there's gonna be a lot more. So until next week, adios. Let's catch another one. Uh, I'm ready. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Oh, oh, and he's down! Roll, 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 roll! Missed it. Strike three. <laughs> there he is. There he is. That's a would-be fish. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.